So Dalton is just like any guy. He goes to the store, he buys some things, and he has to bring them into the house in one trip. So he bought three different objects, one being 79 pounds, another being 21, and one being less than a pound. The question is, how much weight is Dalton carrying right now? Well, he's carrying, obviously, about 100 pounds. And obviously that's because gravity is pulling down on these objects and exerting force on his body. But are they all exerting the same amount of force? Well, obviously not. You know that because they weigh different things, right? And this story sums up Dalton's law. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, and today we're gonna run through Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now let me give you the definition quick, and then we're gonna show how this diagram can actually be shown in the different type of diagram and show the same exact idea. So let me define it quick. Dalton's law of partial pressures is defined as the following. Very professional. So it says that the total pressure of gases on an object, so gases being like air, and the pressure exerted on you by those gases is equal to the sum, okay, so the addition of, all of the gases' individual partial pressures. Now before we show the actual model to understand Dalton's law, think of each individual weight that Dalton was carrying in. These are partial pressures on him, summing up to the total pressure of 100 pounds, right? So the total pressure being 100 pounds, the partial pressures being 79, 21, and less than one is Dalton's law. All right, so how does this get represented in terms of gases? Well, let me draw this real quick. So here's Dalton again on Earth, and obviously Dalton is being pulled down to the Earth by that force of gravity. Because if we didn't have gravity, we'd be just floating around in the atmosphere. But we know that above us is atmosphere, and atmosphere is made of gases. So above Mr. Dalton, we've got a bunch of different gases, and I'm going to draw a few here. So here I've drawn a bunch of pink circles. It's going to be connected to that pink heavy weight. Now, these pink circles are representing the gas of nitrogen. And the chemical formula of that gas is N3. There's three atoms in the molecule. Now, nitrogen makes up 79% of our atmosphere, obviously corresponding to the 79 pound weight. Now, let me give you the other gases in the atmosphere. The next one will be oxygen, designated by these red triangles. And its chemical formula is O2, two atoms of oxygen, one molecule. And this makes up, as you can probably guess, 21% of the air. So 99% of the air above us is made of two gases, nitrogen and oxygen. And then lastly, this small representation, shown by a black dot, will be the gases of water vapor, obviously H2O, as well as carbon dioxide, which is CO2. These guys combine to make up less than 1% of our atmosphere. Okay, great, but what do gases have to do with pressure, right? We're talking about pressure on an object. Well, we know that gravity's pulling us down, and gravity pulls anything with mass, including all of these gas particles. So think about it. All of these gas particles are being pulled down by that same gravity, and it's going to exert a pressure on whatever object is below it. So if you're standing here at sea level, and we've got Dalton with all these gas particles right above him getting pulled down by gravity, there's a pressure being exerted on Dalton from the gases above him. Okay, now that total amount of pressure is equal to about 760 millimeters of mercury. And this is just a unit of air pressure. So that's the total amount of pressure of the gases pushing down on Dalton being 760, also known as one atmospheric pressure. But the question is, what is partial pressure? Well, remember, partial pressures are the pressures of the individual units being pushed down on that object or the person. So of the gas particles, which one is pushing down on Dalton the most? Well, obviously it's nitrogen because most of the objects above him, the gases above him, are nitrogen gases. So if nitrogen is 79% of the air above him, the partial pressure of nitrogen, designated as little p, little p, is going to be somewhere around 600 millimeters of mercury. So in other words, nitrogen is pushing down on Dalton with about 600 millimeters of mercury of pressure. Great. Whereas oxygen is obviously 21% of the air, 21% of that force pushing down on him. So that equates to somewhere around a per partial pressure of oxygen of around 160 millimeters of mercury. So therefore, 160 millimeters of mercury of oxygen is being pushed down on Dalton. And obviously that adds up to about 760, right? Now there's a little bit of water, CO2, argon, other things in the atmosphere that are pushing down, but it hardly equates to any of it. So, once again, Dalton's law of partial pressures is the total pressure of gases on an object, Dalton being 760. It's the sum of all the gases' partial pressures. So, partial pressure of nitrogen, 600. Partial pressure of oxygen, 160. That equals to the total pressure. 
awesome. But what does this have to do with anything? Why do we need to know about the gases pushing down on a person? Well, a couple connections. Number one, if we were to look inside Dalton and zoom in specifically on his lungs, we would see something like this. You would see the lungs, which are, which are open to the outside environment, the air, terminating in this small little air sac called alveoli. And you can learn more about the alveoli in the respiratory system video right here. But the alveoli is basically an air sac that's going to take some of the gases of the atmosphere and exchange them with some of the gases in the bloodstream. That's fascinating. So if you think about it, what gases will fill the lungs most? Well, when we breathe in, we're going to breathe in mostly, obviously, nitrogen as well as oxygen. So I'm going to draw that here. However, in the bloodstream, we're actually going to have very little oxygen. So I'm just going to say low red triangle, so low oxygen because all that oxygen was used up by your cells in aerobic cell respiration, which you can learn more about here. But with that low oxygen amount, we also have a lot of carbon dioxide, which is going to be these black dots. And this was picked up by the bloodstream as a product of cell respiration, once again, that you can learn about there. But the key point here is there's so much CO2 here, very little oxygen. Out in the lungs, there is very high amounts of oxygen and very low carbon dioxide. So what we've done here, by understanding Dalton's law of partial pressures, there is this innate gradient, or the separation of high concentration of something and low concentration of something. So when you breathe in, what happens? Well, the oxygen and high concentration in the air is actually going to flow a high to low and go into the bloodstream. That's how we saturate your blood with oxygen. But at the flip side, all that CO2 in the blood is actually going to go the other direction, flow high to low, and go into the lungs, which can then be breathed out into the atmosphere, which was made possible by the lungs having such low amounts of CO2 and the blood having so high amounts of CO2. So this gradient's already established and it just flows high to low, which is one of the core concepts of anatomy and physiology. But wait, there's more. You see, I drew Earth right here at sea level, but then I drew this large mound. Uh, this is not drawn to scale. This is going to be a mountain, all right? So this mountain is going to be a 10,000 foot tall mountain. So all of you Coloradoans or people who live on mountainous regions, you are this high up on the mountain. Well, if you look at sea level and see all the gases above you pushing down, that equated to 760 millimeters mercury. However, if you go up to 10,000 feet, there is quite a low amount of gases pushing down on you compared to sea level. So the fact is, at 10,000 feet elevation, the total pressure of gases pushing down on you turns into 520 millimeters of mercury. That's a drastic drop from 760, right? Now, if we take that 520 and say, well, what percentage is actually pushing down on the person? Well, we know about 79% will be nitrogen. That equates to something like 410 millimeters of mercury. That's not perfectly accurate. But then more importantly, the gas that we know and love, oxygen, actually goes down now to about 110 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so you probably were asking the question earlier, why didn't I mention nitrogen getting into the bloodstream? Well, we know that nitrogen really doesn't like to dissolve into the blood unless it's under a drastic amount of pressure, which we're going to get to in the next video, so stay tuned. But let's key in on oxygen specifically because oxygen helps your cells make energy. So we have 110 now at 10,000 feet, but we did have 160 earlier, so now there's quite literally less oxygen pushing down on you. And if there's less oxygen pushing down on you, well, there's less of an oxygen gradient from lungs to bloodstream. So in other words, it's more difficult to get oxygen into your blood. And if it's more difficult to get oxygen into your blood, then we know your cells are going to be starved of oxygen. And we know if your cells are starved of oxygen, you, they can't make energy. So how will poor little Dalton on 10,000 foot elevation, what will he do to get more oxygen into his body? Anytime you have too little oxygen, you start to breathe faster. That's called hyperventilation, which means high breathing rate. So if you're at altitude, the reason you start breathing a lot more and you have a higher respiratory rate is because of the lack of oxygen pushing down on you. So you're trying to compensate and get enough oxygen into your blood. Now, if you're interested, hyperventilation can actually lead to a condition called respiratory alkalosis, which I talk about in this video here. So if you want to learn about acidosis and alkalosis, definitely pop over there. But next up, I want to key in on that nitrogen molecule, N3, which doesn't like to dissolve well. But sometimes if you're, say, a scuba diver and you go down deep into the ocean, 
and they tell you, hey, don't go back up to the surface too quickly because you can get what's called the bends, which is quite literally your blood bubbling, and they, you don't want that because you could blow up. So let's talk about why that occurs in the next video here.